Welcome to the forum at Holy Communion. My name is Mike. I'm the rector of Holy Communion. Once a week, we try to post an interesting conversation. Uh, usually in non-pandemic times, we do this between our services on Sunday morning. But right now, we're online. I'm here today to talk to you about saints. Uh, all saints and all souls are two feasts that are coming up in the life of the church. Uh, the Feast of All Souls is sometimes in Spanish called the Dia de los Muertos. And before we get to the feast, I thought we'd talk a little bit about this feast. And when I was thinking about where I wanted to talk about this feast, I thought maybe there's no better place to do that than our chapel at Holy Communion. This chapel is just next to the church. You see it through the windows. Um, there's the main church just in there. But here in the chapel, uh, the chapel is dedicated to St. Francis. And St. Francis is a good place to start as a saint. Uh, he's maybe one of the saints whose day we remember the most in the church, or at least I remember the most from being a kid growing up in the church. St. Francis Day was one of my favorite Sundays because we got to bring the dog to church. St. Francis is remembered as the patron saint of animals. Uh, and in the chapel, these needle points behind me, they tell the story of St. Francis. And St. Francis is who we often think of when we think of saints. We think of those great heroes of the faith of times past. St. Francis has been called one of the only biblical literalists. He took Jesus literally when Jesus said to care for the poor. Francis gave up a life of wealth and began taking care of lepers and people who were poor. Francis also cared deeply for all of creation. And so Francis is regarded as the patron saint of animals and all of God's creation. It's funny that we think about patron saints sometimes in the church. Some of you might have grown up Catholic and praying to St. Anthony to help you find your lost keys or your lost purse. Uh, patron saints are an interesting idea from the church. And I think sometimes we get a little bit stuck there. I know that some folks have asked me, I often get asked in our pilgrimage class, our introduction to Christianity and the Episcopal tradition, I get asked, does the Episcopal Church pray to saints? And the answer is yes, and that may be a little bit of a misconception. Uh, even in the Roman Catholic tradition, while you may name a saint in your prayer, you're not exactly praying to a saint. The idea of saints is this beautiful idea that we're not alone in our faith. And that has a particular meaning right now when we are, many of us, so isolated from one another. Even if we share a house with family like I do, it's not quite the same as what it was when we could all gather in community around a table. To remember though that we are part of a community is part of what All Saints and All Souls is about. We remember the saints in part because their lives touch our lives. Their stories touches our story. Their faith can touch our faith. On the altar behind me, you see an image that I got to talk about with the Reverend Mark Bazzuti Jones and Callie Lattimore, an iconographer, earlier this year in the forum. Uh, the icon was designed in part by Mark and collaborated with the artist Mark Dukes, an iconographer from San Francisco. The icon is known as Mary, our mother of Ferguson and all victims of gun violence. And that icon is an example to how the saints' lives can speak to ours. Mary, the mother of Jesus, knew what it was to sorrow. Mary knew what it was to grieve over a child's life lost at the hands of the state, lost at the hands of systems of violence. And so Mary, who is sometimes called the queen of the saints by the church, 
Mary can be a guide, a solace, a friend to us, someone who can walk with us when we are in the midst of sorrow, when we are in the midst of lament about God's children still being killed at the hands of officers of the state, when we are in the midst of lament of too many children's lives lost to violence, Mary can walk with us. I think that's really what is meant when we involve the saints in our prayers. We remember those great lives that point us to God. And we know that when we approach God in prayer, we are not alone, but that our prayers echo with the prayers of those who have gone before us. In the Episcopal Church, we do treat saints a little bit differently. We don't have a pope. We don't have a centralized world authority to tell us exactly who the saints are. The idea in the church is that the saints bubble up. And so while Mary and Francis were sort of grandfathered into the Episcopal Church as saints to be celebrated because the church had been celebrating them for such a long time when we began, we have added saints to our calendar. I'm particularly impressed with some of the saints that the Episcopal Church has chosen to add in recent years. Folks like Polly Murray, the Reverend Dr. Polly Murray, the first African-American woman to become an Episcopal priest, who was also, also a major attorney and a framer of civil rights in this country. Thurgood Marshall, another major attorney and author of civil rights who won Brown versus Board of Education and desegregated American schools, was also an Episcopalian and is counted among the saints. And those are officially saints in the Episcopal Church. We do have a calendar. We actually have about three right now, but we have a calendar of feast days of folks who we have officially chosen to remember as a whole body. But the Episcopal Church likes to name folks saints who are already being celebrated. And there's an invitation there for folks to celebrate the lives of holy people. Madeline Lingle, an Episcopal author, explained saints in one of the ways that I have liked the best. She said she went around canonizing her own saints all the time. She canonized Johann Sebastian Bach and Albert Einstein. She canonized anybody whose life pointed her toward the great life in God. And so this time of all saints invites us to ask, who are your saints? Who are the lives that point you toward God? Who can you pray with? Who can you learn from? And that gets us into the double nature of the time of all saints and all souls. You'll notice next to Mary on the altar is a skull. And that's a painted skull in the style of Dia de los Muertos. We've actually sent skulls, uh, paper ones, to the kids in our congregation, and we're inviting them to color them in and to take pictures and send them to the church, and we'll put them on the altar of remembrance that's in the church right now. But part of this time of the year, it's not just about the capital S saints, the great lives who get feast days, who end up becoming patrons of animals or of lost items or of beer like St. Arnold. It's also for the lowercase s saints. There is an understanding in Christianity that when we gather to celebrate communion, we unite our prayers. That when we gather to celebrate communion, we're not alone. It's, it's even when the church is full at Holy Communion on Easter day and there are 300 people celebrating communion together, it's not just us. It's Christians all over the world celebrating that sacrament together, but it's not just the living. We say that we join in the song, holy, 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 that is prayed throughout eternity. That the boundaries of the table aren't just the physical altar on which the priest celebrates communion, but they're expanded 
that we celebrate this feast, our prayers are united with all of those who have gone before us in faith. That's why in Latin America, this time of the year, the time around Dia de los Muertos, is a time to remember family members who have died, to bring remembrances of them to the altar, uh, to remember their stories, their songs, what touched them, the way in which their lives touched us. We believe in a God whose best name is love. And so the love that is shared between human beings is not lost. When someone dies, they are not lost. And our love for them can go on and can continue to unite us with them. We talk about the time around all saints and all souls as a time when the veil gets thin, when we can be reminded that we are not alone in this life, that we are surrounded by the prayers and the love of all of those who have gone before us. So whether you come to Holy Communion and bring a picture for the Oferta altar, the uh, place of remembrance in our church in this season of a loved one who has died, whether you light a candle there and say a prayer, or whether you just take some time to remember those who have gone before you, to give thanks for those who have inspired your faith, whether they are capital S or lowercase s saints, know that in this time, even this anxious time of COVID and election, know that you're not alone. And if I can challenge you, join in a bit of what the church is doing. Sing a song of the saints of God with us. Submit your video singing along. Send in that picture, that story of a loved one. Bring it to church and drop it off in the entryway down on Jackson by the office. That door is open most of the time. I think it's like 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, Monday through Friday. Or we'll be there for the um, drive-by to say goodbye to Lori. We can collect the pictures then as well. But put your picture on the altar of the person that you loved and see no longer, the person who has gone before you in death. Take some time to remember those who have died. Pray for those families who have lost loved ones to COVID. Take some time to pray with the saints, especially if you've never done that before. Take some time to grieve with Mary. Allow her faith to inspire yours. And know that all of us, this community of love shared between the living the community of love that we share even with those who have died, all of that love has its origin in what Richard Rohr, the Franciscan priest, has called the big love. The big love, the life-defining, life-giving, liberating love of God. My prayers are with you as you prepare for the Feast of All Saints and All Souls. Please be in touch. On Sunday, just after our service on the 25th, we'll have a conversation about saints and about souls. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about what it means to celebrate these lives, and we'll remember together some of the great lives that have inspired us. Thanks so much for joining me for this forum.